Hello, my name is Josephine Talamantes, um, AKA Josie Talamantes, for those who uh, remember me from back in the day. And uh, when did you first meet David Rico? I first met David Rico in 1970. Um, I was a student at San Diego City College and uh, David was a returning vet uh, from Vietnam along with David Rico and Agustin Sandoval and um, just, you know, the Fierro brothers, many people that were coming back. And I met David during that time. And then um, we, we became very involved in community issues with the takeover of uh, Chicano Park, with the takeover of the neighborhood house. And um, we were friends. Um, Ron Trujillo, David Rico, uh, Rico Bueno, um, very, very close friends of mine at the time. And still, even now it's posthumously because they're both uh, passed away. So, but friends, yes. Loving friends, good friends, partying friends. <laughs> Bottom line, we were all having a good time, you know. And I got along with all the guys, it was easy. I was raised with boys. I have three older brothers, so I, I, wasn't, um, I wasn't critical of the guys when they tried to be, um, you know, male machos. You know, I'd just tell them to shut the hell up because I wasn't gonna deal with their stuff. Plus, I wasn't going out with any of them, so <laughs> we all got along just fine. And then, uh, what's some of the, what some memories you wanna share about the early activism I think, I think my memories of David all the way up until his departure recently um, was his perseverance um, as a brown beret and standing up for the community and never um, backing down, even, even later years. Uh, sometimes it was easier to defend and fight and do those kinds of things when, when everybody was doing it. And then as things started to wane, those that stayed, that continued to fight, were critical. And I would put David in that category. He never backed down. He never um, succumbed to the pressures of whoever. And um, for that, I think I've kept him in my mind all these years, in my prayers, uh, for his strength, for his health, so that he could continue the fight, because not just here in San Diego, but in other places as well. You know, after a while, you kind of are doing things and you're not sure that they're impactful. And um, I think his perseverance for me uh, stays stays in my mind because he never backed down. What would you say uh, David's legacy is in the Chicano movement? I think David's legacy is um, uh, being a comandante del Brown Berets. I think that was critical. Um, and I think he led the Berets in such a way that was community involvement, community oriented, and commitment to community. Um, I. I, I think the other thing um, with regard to, um, I think his knowledge um, of, and political astuteness of being able to negotiate, um, being able to interface with the powers that be but not lose his cool or lose his commitment to whatever he was uh, negotiating, uh, you know, as many know or don't know, but when we established the Chicano Park Steering Committee, David Rico, David, uh, David Rico, Angie Avila, Mike Nava, Rico Bueno, and Patricia Salazar were the negotiators with the city. We occupied Chicano Park for 12 days and we identified those to be the negotiators. They had the skill, they had the experience, and they had the ganas, you know, to defend the community and not give and not back down. So I think that that's what, what I would remember him as his legacy. Um, his legacy 
it will remain for many years and we will we will honor that as we go forward in the Chicano Park Museum and Cultural Center as those who contributed um, way back when, all the way up to the present. Is there a favorite memory you have of David that you would like to share? <laughs> I don't think I'd like to share it. <laughs> we were partying a lot, all of us. <laughs> um, I, I, you know, maybe, maybe just an image of, of David, uh, not necessarily a memory, but an image of him standing in, um, in formation uh, for the Chicano Park Steering Committee, for the Neighborhood House. Um, uh, I would even add uh, the Centro Cultural de la Raza at times in there as well. Um, memories, I guess one memory was probably later years, not necessarily early on, but one time the Centro was dealing with conflict and this was probably in the 2000s. And I remember coming in from Sacramento because I was in Sacramento at the time. And we, I, I, it was a community meeting. And the memory I have, because I got there from the airport, um, uh, straight from the airport to the Centro, and I got there at the same time David was getting out of the car with a whole group of young brown berets and they were going into the, into the Centro. Um, and I think for me, uh, there's probably deeper, deeper understanding of that interaction that I won't share <laughs> in this video, but um, I remember during the process um, of listening to the community um, articulate their concerns to the Centro Cultural, and I would look back at David, and, and he was there with all these young guys. And we were just waiting. We were all waiting because we didn't know which, direct, which direction the Centro was going to take. Um, I think for me that memory it stays in my mind because it was a consistency of the train of thought and the commitment that David always kept for community. So. It was 1969, it wasn't 1970 with the, with the founding of the park. It was, here we are in 2000, the year's 2000, and he's older now, and, and he's still got a, the next um, generation of young berets showing them how to support and defend community. And I think that stays in my mind. Um, I wasn't very involved with the berets. Uh, uh, I personally wanted to be a beret, but was more scared of my mom than anybody else <laughs> of her, uh, um, you know, pulling me by the ears or whatever. I mean, I was an activist, but um, being a brown beret is also visually being an activist and a commitment. And I was, like I said, more afraid of my mom um, than, than anything else. So I, I supported the berets. Um, I hung with the berets off and on in my early years, uh, but I never became a beret. And I was proud that people like um, David Rico and Rico Bueno, these guys that had committed themselves into the military of this country to defend this country during Vietnam, and then coming back and understanding and, and recognizing what they already knew in their heart with regard to the racism of this country um, at that time and pretty much to this day, I think we're changing slowly, but uh, they faced so much discrimination coming back as vets. And then, and it wasn't just them. I mean, if you look at it historically, you know, World War II vets, all the Raza World War II vets also couldn't be buried in Texas and in the same cemetery as white people. And I think that for me, honoring these guys, uh, because I had so many family members of mine that were in World War II and then friends that had passed, like Putsy, you know, uh, in this area, guys that I went to school with that died in Vietnam. So, you know, David Rico and Rico Bueno coming back from the military 
you know, proud of their service and yet had to fight the discrimination and racism in this country and chose to be Brown Berets to serve our community as our defenders of our community. And I think that for me is his legacy. I think it is his, um, it was his birthright, if you will, because that's what he chose to do. And for that, he will always be honored and respected, at least in my heart, and of course, in this Chicano Park Museum and Cultural Center as we go forward.